A new ground station is being added to the worldwide communication network that will someday link the entire globe through satellite transmission. This inflatable ray dome is being built near Halifax, Nova Scotia, and will house a tracking antenna that will receive signals from Telstar, Syncom, Relay, and other satellites. The skin is a coated fabric just one sixteenth of an inch thick, but when it is inflated, a two-ton weight could be suspended from inside the dome. Meanwhile, there is the tricky job of getting the dome in position after the rim is attached to the base. The workers must be half acrobat to qualify for the job. When the fabric is spread out properly, electric blowers force air through wind tunnels to raise the inside pressure above that of the atmosphere. Then doors in the form of airlocks will maintain inside pressure and presto, you have a self-supporting structure more than 100 feet high and 90 feet at the base. In case of leaks, the fabric can be easily repaired. This is easy. In a bosun's chair slung from the peak, a workman goes aloft for an inspection. When completed, the ray dome will enable Canada to join with stations in the US, Britain, France, and Germany in satellite experiments. Another link in the magic ring of outer space communication, the miracle of the age. Okay guys, we're back again with another uh, video. This one's going to be a little bit different than what I normally do on my channel. Uh, we're in uh, Mill River, Nova Scotia, or Charleston, Nova Scotia, at the uh, abandoned Teleglobe facility. And uh, we're going to take a walk down this long pathway here and check it out.
crazy. This massive building just sitting way out in the middle of nowhere in rural Nova Scotia. This is just one of the two buildings. Apparently there's a, a pathway on the other side that takes you down to where the other side of late uh, station was. So we'll start off on this end and we'll take a look around and uh, see what we can find. Echo. Hello. Fucking creepy. What's on up there?
guys, this was the, uh, I'll show a picture here. At one time, this was an actual, bit like, enclosed hallway. Um, the structure's been taken down, so now it's just a, an odd concrete walkway in the middle of the woods, which was once enclosed with a roof. And this takes you down to the uh, second satellite station and the second set of buildings. This is the back side of the uh, first building we were on there. So, I guess we'll take a walk down this way and uh, see what we can find down here. Here's the second building that was way down that long uh, hallway. The top of this building is where the one of the massive satellites would have been. As you can see, everything's been pretty much ripped down, ripped apart, but this would have been one of the other buildings with the uh, one of the satellites on the roof. This would have been another control control room in here with the uh, satellite up on the roof. Um, I can show some archive footage I found here in a minute and I'll show you what the uh, control room looked like in its heyday back in the 80s.
exciting year in space. We predict that in this giant balloon, the 100-ton parabolic radio space tracking station will step up telecommunication in the Northern Hemisphere. With other Earth stations already operating in England, on the continent and in America, Canada's new contribution brings 24-hour-a-day, round-the-world contact to certainty in 1967. All these random roads in the middle of the woods, like long forgotten asphalt roadways. And there's so many of them, I don't know that I'm gonna be able to get down all of them and see what, what's at the end of them all. I guess I'm gonna go down this one and we'll see what we come up with. All right, as we're coming up to the end of this long random road in the middle of the woods, it looks like we've got another satellite base down here. I think this was the base that the second giant satellite was on. Pretty sure.